Guys, so I uh, was wanting to hook up my well to run off of my generator just in case I ever needed it. And um, I actually uh, didn't have it hooked up. I had all the parts bought and we had the uh, Texas snowstorm of the year and uh, lost power for about three and a half days. I had all my parts to hook up my well, but I didn't have it hooked up. It was laying in my shop on top of the receipt, ready to go. So Monday morning when I lost power, I decided it's a good time to hook up my well. So, yeah. Don't wait until you lose power and don't have water. So this is what I did. I want to show you guys this because I talked to a couple of people, a couple of well guys, and everybody said, oh, you just got to wait until your power goes out and then you got to um, um, southern engineer it into your, your box and all that, and there's not a way to hook it up to where you can just, like, do it easily. So I'm not an electrician. I'm not that mechanically inclined, but I like things to be simple and easy to do. And so I said, I want my well to be able to run like normal when the power's on. And when the power goes off, I can just simply unplug it, plug it into my generator and have water. Ta-da. Now, what's so hard about that? People said it can't be done. Oh, it's not, it's not easy to do. Just leave it to me, Beaver. I got it. So here's what I did. This is in my well house. So this is, this is very simple. Normally, your power, this is your power coming from the house, from your main source. It comes in here. It comes over here and it would go all the way over here to this little switch right so you would go from your main power source into your control switch whatever they call this so then it comes out of here and it goes to your gray box breaker box deal like i said non electrician don't really know what that is but then it goes from there into your well all right so what i did is i Basically just took where the power comes in, brought it up here, and I put a female plug on it. Now, I bought this at a local electric store, and then what I did is I came over here. So this would normally come out of the power box, and it would come to this gray box, right? And then go from here to the deal. So what I did is put my, took this out, put a female end on it, right? And then I took, went and bought this, this wire. Make sure you get the right gauge wire. Electric people can tell you what it is or well people. And bring that out over and put a male end on it and plug it into here. So as of right now, we have, not to be confusing, main power source coming. Comes up here, put a female, basically cut this cord in half if you want to. Put a female end on it and put a male end on it and follow it back over to here basically all you have to do is cut it in half put a male and a female end on it that's it that's all you have to do so now when my power goes out all i do is i simply pull this out and plug it into my generator what's important to do is make sure that the plug you have that fits into this make sure this plug fits into your generator so what i did is i made sure that my male plug and i don't want to unplug it but i made sure that my male plug fit into my generator and then i bought a female plug to match that so that was very, very simple. I hope that's not too confusing. But to make it simple, when your power comes, your main power source comes in, it would normally go, this is looped around behind the, the tank here and comes back around here, it would normally go to this gray control switch. So basically, all you do is you cut that in half and put a male and a female end in it so that when your power is working, everything is cool. When your power is out, you just unplug this and plug it in to your generator. So... People told me, oh, you can't leave an exposed wire all this. I don't. I have a female plug and a male plug. It's very simple. Ta-da.